Hi, welcome or well, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Yuking Zhou Brandenburg. I'm so glad that you're hanging out with me today. If you are interested in anything piano or music related, please hit the subscribe button and hit that bell. That way you won't miss out on any of my future videos and it will help this channel a lot. People may think that being a classically trained pianist means you will find it easy to play in any style or any setting, including a pop band. Wrong! It is very different. It's like thinking that being a professional figure skater would automatically make you a great hockey player. You know that's not true. It's the same with pianists or keyboardists in the classical or pop scene. You want to hear some funny stories as a keyboardist in a pop band? Then stay right here with me. When you perform on stage with a fog machine and very low lights, you basically can't see anything. Not your hands, not the keys or buttons. You just have to practice blind. This was how I practiced before a show with a pop band. Sunglasses, great idea. But I realized if the sunglasses are too clean, I can still see too clearly. So, fingerprint. Ha. More fingerprint. More fingerprint. Okay. Oh, I can't see anything anymore now. I think I'm ready. I had never played a rock organ or an organ synthesizer for a pop or rock band. I knew the layout of the keys is the same as piano. But I also knew that the feel was going to be much different. Because not only are the keys plastic, they aren't weighted. So they don't have the same slap back that piano keys have. Also, I didn't know when to use what buttons or knobs. And sometimes on synthesizers, there are a lot of both. And because pianists don't have them, some of us might think we don't really need them. And I have never really been all that curious about music technology. After all, the design of the modern piano hasn't changed very much in the last 150 years. One of my bandmates at the time who is now my husband, offered to let me borrow his Roland VK8, which is a really fantastic organ synthesizer. So I dragged the 50 pound keyboard home, set it up and plugged it in. Okay, let's check this thing out. Okay, restart. I don't want this keyboard to explode. Let's practice some scales. So even today, I'm still scared to touch any buttons on the organ. Another time at band rehearsal, Someone said, we need some cello. They asked me, can you play some cello sound? I said, sure. I immediately switched on my classical musician's brain. And the first thing I thought of was one of the most famous cello pieces ever composed. The Swan 
from Saint-Saëns, the Carnival of the Animals. It turned out that's not what they wanted. They just wanted the part played on the keyboard that sounds like a cello. Classical pianists don't often get to play along with drum sets, and especially not at the volume that pop and rock drummers play. When I first started playing in a pop band with drums, I was like, oh wow, that's loud. I thought to myself that rhythms should be more felt, not heard, as the primary element with one notable exception. Fortunately, we were playing in ears, meaning everyone had their own headphones and earbuds. So you could control your own sound mix. Oh my goodness, that's way too loud! Oh, let me just mute you. In the pop music world, you can mute someone. I love this. When I first started in the pop scene, I was mostly unfamiliar with drum sets and guitars and synthesizers. I remember sitting in the green room backstage with the band members before a rehearsal and hearing some very deep tone from the stage. And I thought that it sounds like a tuba. I asked my friend, is that a tuba? He looked at me like I was crazy and said, no, it's a bass. Well, that was embarrassing. And even weirder when I saw that it was a bass guitar, not the double bass I was familiar with from my experience with chamber music and orchestra. In an old-fashioned classical world, if you want a certain sound, you need to find the instrument to play that sound. When I was first introduced to the pads or synthesizers, I was so amazed by all those different sounds and not having real people playing those actual instruments. When I listen to any soundtrack and hear something like orchestral sound, I ask my friends, oh, which orchestra is that? They say, that's this keyboard. Or I'll say, oh, what a beautiful new age sound. What instruments are they? My friends will say, oh, that's in that computer. Or even native Indian music. I ask, wow, do we have guest musicians? Nope. That will be you on this keyboard. You know, it's really cool that we have all this technology to create a wide range of sounds digitally especially if you don't have the budget or time to rehearse dozens of extra musicians. If you want to see an excellent example of keyboards blended with classical style piano, I will leave the link down below to this video. Um, our video is called Rhapsody of Amazing Grace and Beethoven's Ninth. Pianists need to be able to control their volume, which sometimes means playing very loud on the piano without microphones or amplifiers. To play in a big concert hall, 
you need to train in order to be physically capable of doing that. And when you learn a piece, you practice just like that day after day to generate enough power with your fingers and arms and sometimes your whole body. One time, I was invited to perform Chopin's revolutionary etude at Sinta Center for the Vineyard Church 25th anniversary. The arena seats 10,000 people, and I have never played for a crowd that big. So the second I walked in, I was pretty intimidated. They didn't have a grand piano on stage, only a keyboard. So I was going to have to perform Chopin on an electric keyboard. I had practiced on the keyboard before, and I noticed that you can't really play it with all the force and energy that you would on a real piano. Because the keyboard stand moves and feels very wobbly. I was afraid the keyboard would collapse or tip over. I was trying to figure out how to play with less force, but not less fire, because I didn't want the piece to lose its character. I still needed to show fire, but not destroy the keyboard, like this. back, I was doing a set with just acoustic guitar and keyboard, and one of the singers asked if she could sing a song a half step lower than what we had practiced. I was like, hang on, I have to transpose first. Usually I can just transpose in my head and play it on the spot, but just to be certain, so I don't hang the singers out to dry, I like to write down the changes. So, while the guitarist has only to move his capo down a half step, I needed to pick up my chord chart and pencil, and I was thinking to myself, well, that's just cheating. You have to put some effort into transposing. Then, someone showed me that you can just push this little button and you can transpose and play the song in any key. Problem solved. Except that having perfect pitch will drive you nuts while you are playing digitally transposed keyboards because you are seeing one key and hearing another. Okay, I have one more for you. Improvisations. I'm sure there are classical pianists who improvise very well. But if you are typical classically trained pianist, improvisation is probably not your strong suit. Sometimes though, as a pop band keyboardist, you might be asked to play an improvised solo or play some improvised fills between phrases. Once I was asked to play some aggressive solo lines and when I asked what exactly they wanted me to play, the band leader said, just knock yourself out and have fun with it. I don't even know what that means. Knock myself out and have fun with it? I don't want to be unconscious and this definitely isn't going to be any fun. My husband is a really good soloist and improvises very well. He said, just play Chiani. That word totally worked for my brain. I know how to play lots of Chiani. So I played some passages that fit what we needed for the song and 
Everybody loved it. If you don't know who or what Chiani is, you can check out my last video where I talked about Chiani. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up or share it with your friends. I hope to see you in my next one. Bye!